Segundo con tertulio, Jacobo Greenberg. El experimento, experimento culminado con éxito que poco tiempo antes y a propósito de los modos y maneras de la comunicación directa sin intervención del lenguaje entre cerebros habíais llevado a cabo en México. ¿Podrías explicar ese experimento y sus consecuencias al resto de los contertulios y a todos nuestros espectadores? Cómo no. <coughs> Who is Dr. Jacobo Greenberg? He is a Mexican scientist who may have been on the brink of discovering the true nature of consciousness. He studied Mexican shamanism, meditation, telepathy, and more. He was often criticized for mixing science with what his colleagues called magic, and therefore his theories were often rejected. One of these theories was his synturgy theory from his book, El Cerebro Consciente states that there is a continuous space of energy and the common human can only perceive a part of it. The result of this process is what everyone understands as reality. This theory tries to answer the question of the creation of the experience. But even with the opposition he faced in his own field, he conducted telepathy experiments and these theories he developed caught the eye of the CIA. And on December 12th, 1994, Dr. Jacobo Greenberg went missing and was never heard from again. What happened to Dr. Greenberg? Was the CIA involved? Did his research have anything to do with his disappearance? What exactly was his research about? Did he discover the true nature of reality? A recent documentary about Dr. Jacobo Greenberg has resurrected the conversation about his work and disappearance, and is heavily discussed in this video. Link in the description. Today, I'm joined by Pavel Ibarra, a Mexican journalist who has been studying the case for a while now and wanted to bring this story to more people. Bueno, el experimento, lo que intentó fue eh, ver si existían interacciones directas cerebro a cerebro. Como tú dijiste, sin el uso de la palabra, sin el uso de movimientos, eh, sin eh, el uso de sonidos. If you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. Please hit that like button, betters. That really helps out the videos. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, Comment down below, what do you think of this story? It's absolutely fascinating. Oh, one more thing about Dr. Jacobo Greenberg. Why was he hanging out with Jacques Vallée? Let's dive in. Hey, Patrick, thank you for having me, man. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to make just a couple of disclaimers before we start, because the subjects that I'm going to touch on uh, are not exactly UFO related, but they do correlate uh, strongly. And I'll explain why uh, during the conversation. So uh, one of these topics is uh, psychedelics um, and I am in no way endorsing uh, the drug usage or substance abuse uh, because um, I know that using psychedelics is not for everybody. So I do want to tell uh, people that uh, to be very careful and I know that they are, they are not legal in most of the world. So please be careful with them because the experiences I've had uh, nearly got me killed. So please, uh, uh, that's one disclaimer. The other one is I will be dropping a lot of names here that are related to a UFO phenomenon and consciousness studies. Uh, and I am in no way making any claims about them, nor am I saying that uh, accusing anybody of anything. Uh, the investigation that I'm doing just links 
to these these names and these people uh, and it's, and the other disclaimer is that i do collaborate with christian harleff at the big thing show but i am not representing the big thing today i'm representing myself my channel is called Psicoactivo Podcast. I am on Spotify and on YouTube. You can find me there. I do have a lot of interviews in Spanish because when I first started, um, I was a novice in all of this. And I I started doing it for the people that live near me. I live currently live in Tijuana. So the, I, have, I do have five interviews in English with people from the UFO community and consciousness studies too and that's where i'm at the, those are the disclaimers basically the investigation that i've been doing since 2021 more more or less uh it has to do with this specific topic uh basically i want to tell the story of one of the most important scientists in the field of consciousness who has been who has been largely ignored uh or his achievements too in the english speaking community his name is Dr. Jacobo Greenberg. He's a Mexican scientist. He did his PhD in the university in, in New York. Uh, his PhD is focused on electrophysiological effects of geometric stimuli on the human brain. And the way I uh, connected with him is uh, through my, my story, my, my backstory which essentially is uh, my first experience, uh, anomalous experience, happened when I was 14 years old. Uh, my mother went on a trip with- How, how old the, are you now, Pavel? I am 37 right now. And so, also, be, before I so continue though, yeah, before I continue, my background, that's important too, because, well, I, I do have a background in sports journalism. I've been a sports journalist for 14 years. But during university, I studied in Guadalajara. I studied communications, but uh, they trained me as a media analyst. So from the very beginning, when I started uh, my professional career, I was already trained in how to identify uh, the leaning of any any media outlet or person or, or you know institution. Sure. So I've been trained in this forever, and also I, uh, my my thesis sort of to speak uh it's in radio so okay i am a i am a dropout i didn't finish due to personal reasons but i was one semester away from finishing and i yeah. did and i did start my career before i dropped out and sports journalism so i am a journalist I, I don't care if i don't have the credentials uh sure. there's you this, got the experience yeah that, that's what and, matters, dude. Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. That's like a uh, chef going, oh, uh, I didn't go to culinary school, but I've worked 15 years for so-and-so chef. I promise you, no one gives an app. In fact, every chef's like, you you, you would have wasted your time going to culinary school. And maybe some journalists would argue, you don't need, you're better off doing what you did. So anyway. Um, all right. So this yeah. event happened 23 years ago, right? Yes. When you, your first anomalous event, you're 14. So you're 37 now. So that puts it at, God, I am horrible with bananas. I don't know numbers here. Uh, I don't know what date that is. What is that? 19? You know, it was like 2002, 90, 2003. You're right. Oh, like my that. gosh. You're right. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my mom, uh, we all grew up uh, in a household where my mother, well, she's a single mom, first of all. And she was always very adamant and making us read material that helped us uh, improve our life like self-help and all that stuff right sure and I, and at first i i i was very judgmental about it because it was kind of intrusive in the lives of me and my brothers but then she started veering towards the more like um esoterical aspect of all sure. this stuff and she called a shaman for um, a an, uh, peyote experience. And she went there with her friends and took peyote and all that stuff, right? And when the the shaman, who's called a maracame, who's a, a kind of a shaman from the north of Mexico, 
they are the only ones that have permission to deal with peyote like it's it's in law it's written in law yeah uh, you guys you guys in texas have a lot of uh fields of uh, peyote that are protected by the government actually yeah uh this this shaman marakame came to my house after the the event with the adults and he started um doing some healing ceremonies with kids the kids that were there and I at first I was really skeptical. I didn't I wasn't even but I, I was like it's not gonna do anything to me. I'll let him do whatever he wants to do. So I stood in front of him and he started chanting and he told me to keep my mouth shut. So I kept it shut. He grabbed my face like this as he was chanting, and then I felt like a tooth broke out. Like something inside my mouth. And I was like, Did I break a tooth? What the hell? And he just put his hand out. And he, just let, he was like, spit it out. And I was like, okay. How did he know that I broke a tooth? What the hell? So I spat it out. And it was a red rock about this size. Which just materialized inside my mouth. I don't know how else to explain it. And when I, I had this experience, I, I was really freaked out. I started trying to investigate what how that happened and where that came from and that's how i got into my very first rabbit hole so to speak of, and of i started I, you know i do have a quick thought um yeah, yeah go ahead i think i that is that is super interesting first of all that story right like holy shit if i'm you and this guy puts his hand on my face and does the shake he did a shaking some sort no, he just chanted and just grabbed my and, face and just like held this. and just held it yeah i felt i i did feel really warm to the touch that was kind of strange i mean that's crazy right and then you spit out a fucking rock out of your mouth you know what i mean um yeah that's interesting i i don't know why the my first thought in my mind is is that as he's going up again i'm just spitballing here go ahead maybe he had it. the the rock and he put it in your mouth and like a little magician trick. You know what I mean? My Does that make was sense? Closed. Like he like he had yeah. to go up and he said, close your mouth, right? He put he threw it in real quick. He put his clothes. But that's really hard. Think about that. He's got to throw a rock in your mouth or set it in there with you not yeah. noticing. So I don't know. Um, dude, that's interesting. Where do you think that rock came from? I have no idea. Uh okay, so this ties into the doctor. So um I started reading and trying to find literature that could explain to me what happened. So yeah. I stumbled upon a writer. A very Did he do it to writer. other kids at the party? Yeah, same thing. So you they, they got it. Yeah. Some there there were two kids that didn't spit out anything. Nothing came out. Nothing came out. Yeah. I do remember wow. that. Wow. And the other kids are also to this day because I grew up with them. They're yeah practically family and they still sure. can't explain what talk about either, so. that yeah yeah totally yeah so when i started uh, looking into documentation and everything i could find on it i stumbled upon carlos castaneda who is uh, one of the most famous writers from the 60s and 70s and he eventually turned out to be like some kind of cult leader who uh, did all kinds of crazy stuff um, kept like uh, sexual slaves and all that shit you know you know oh, how cults geez. are like yeah, yeah 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 what do you mean i know what cults are like pavel what do you imply? i mean what i mean like, you, yeah, I, I, i'm you mean? <laughs> no no i'm talking about the history of america for yeah, example I like I charles know. manson know, and all that no, shit <laughs> you know you know patrick you know about cults you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you're like no no you're hey like, betters <laughs> hey man I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, that's funny though. That's a good job. Yeah. That's <laughs> no. Okay. Continue. <laughs> uh, okay. So he's got this cult go, or he becomes famous for for getting this cult yeah. going. Okay. And he has this book that became like the the book for the counterculture in the '60s. Every hippie read that book. It's called Las Enseñanzas de Don Juan, which is translates to the the teachings of Don Juan. Yeah. And it talks about this one of the most famous. Uh, mythical figures in literature, Don Juan, who is a shaman from the north of Mexico, who uh, oh, see, accepted, I never heard of him. Okay, accepted, okay. Car accepted Carlos Castaneda as his student. 
There oh, so are, he was alive at the time. This isn't some ancient yeah. figure. This is like, okay, yeah. got it. Got it, got it, got it. And actually, uh, th there is a documentary from the BBC that talks about this this whole story being bullshit. Because okay. there, there, someone went and tried to find Don Juan and they couldn't find him. And they came up, they came up with the theory and the idea that it was all, it all came from it all came from Castaneda's mind. Interesting. But all the information in there, like he, he wrote three books at first, and then he wrote another two. What I think is, are he, there any photos he, or online or? Yeah, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll send you some. Yeah. Uh, what I think is that if he invented it, I, I I do think he did spend a lot of time with shamans. And I think the the Don Juan character was created for the book, which but, was like oh an, I was saying uh, there's so there's no pictures of Don Juan no there are pictures oh, of that's Castaneda what I was from that from that era and, from that era no no of course yeah. of course okay I got you sorry yeah. sorry you, so your theory your theory that you think yeah uh, what I think is that he uh, wrote the first book and it was such a hit that he just kept writing them you know sure and. At the same time, he's one side of this whole uh, shaman's stuff. That he 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 walked very much on the dark side of esotericism and all that stuff. And at the same time, in Mexico, Dr. Greenberg, he he got his PhD and he wanted to. He had all these questions that we all have in life: What is reality? Does the soul exist? Um, where does uh, consciousness come from? And he wanted to tackle all these questions through science. Sure. So uh, after he came back from New York, uh, the Mexican president's uh, sister at the time invited him to basically what is the White House in Mexico, which is called Los Pinos. Yeah. yeah. And that's where he introduced... Uh, Jacobo Greenberg to Pachita, who is the main case study of uh, his work with uh, Mexican shamans. And that's what the documentary that I saw is based uh, on, uh, mostly. Uh, uh, the documentary, by the way, is uh, done by Ida Cuellar, who is a, a Spanish uh, filmmaker from Barcelona. Shout out to Ida. He, when was I, the documentary talking. made? It was in 2021. Oh, so this is just a few years ago. Yeah, it's very recent because yeah, because the whole investigation into the documentary took him a little over a decade. And what was the period of time that he was writing these books about Don Juan? Uh, this is Castaneda. Yeah, the the other guy. The, yeah, that's the 60s and 70s, and at so the same for, time for. Greenberg Sorry. was writing all his books about consciousness and about everything else at the same time as Castaneda. I, I talk about the both of them because they're like the yin and yang of uh, of a story, in my view. Because as I tell you, Castaneda was like the dark side and Greenberg was like the light side of this uh, studies of consciousness. But... Why do you say Greenberg. dark and light side? Because you think the dark side, like he was kind of going in the mounds and doing it raw and guerrilla style where the other guy's trying to do it through science. Is that what you mean? Yeah. And okay. also uh, the, the shamans have this philosophy of the skinwalker, you know, uh, yeah. have you heard of the, the basics of it? Yeah. So they, is this the same skinwalkers they talk about like on secrets of skinwalker ranch, right? Cause that's native American. Yeah. Right, yes. it's the same thing, right? Okay, yeah. Those are basically the same. But those are obviously harder to prove. Sure. Uh, because when, when Greenberg met Castaneda, um, Greenberg realized quickly that he couldn't go down the same path. He had to go through science to sure. prove all, all of the theories he was studying. And But he was Greenberg, inspired by him, you think? No. I think he, he started going down his road and eventually, when Greenberg was already prominent, they met. What what happened in Greenberg's life that made him say, "There's something here, and I need I want to study this." Science? He met he met Pachita. 
just by meeting her what's no that? well he, he went to israel in the documentary uh ida Cuellar talks about greenberg going to israel and speaking to people as a young man that's where he met his first wife uh speaking to people who were like mediums they were very involved in this parapsychology stuff and uh, that's where he started uh getting these get inspired questions. a little bit yeah okay i got you yeah and then he meets pachita and he's like oh i'm gonna study yeah. her there's and, something and, here you, you get you gotta understand the context too because he didn't meet her anywhere he met her at the president's house yeah i mean how connected was this woman sure that they met there you know what what was and, she in society like was she a housewife like was she worked somewhere was she worked for the government she was a native american a native mexican shaman who was very famous because of what she did Th where when did they she met li she lived outside the city somewhere in her, oaxaca. With her tribe oh she lived in oaxaca okay yeah got it got it and when they met uh beautiful place president the president's sister told him when he started writing a lot of books and he also did this uh uh trained children in mexico and in the, the state of mexico who could read without looking and he could do it too there's wait. people yeah wait, wait, wait. what yeah wait. they can read without looking at the words yeah and and uh, in this documentary they tell you about this it's called the eyeless sight okay interesting all right and and you're saying greenberg could do this yes or he said he could do this okay people uh, there's a lot of people and there's uh, yeah he, uh, sure sure okay yeah. well i would imagine it works just like like remote viewing it or yeah or it's something essentially like kind of kind of something like that using yeah. your mind you know to to okay I, I i can't figure out how that would work but what do i know um okay so let's assume he okay he can do this sorry sorry please so when uh pachita started talking to him about what she could do he already had some experience with stuff like that uh but but pachita told him she could do is something that he needed to see for himself because it's so outlandish that you don't believe it honestly and he's like he it, i got eyeless sight but what you're telling me is crazy right like, yeah okay exactly right, fair enough fair enough yeah and uh, so to be honest with say? you uh, now to I be honest it, with like, you what to be honest with you I, there, there's a lot of stuff that i i mean we live in a material world uh i don't believe in most of the stuff that i've read from this whole experience sure but these experiences that I had uh, make me think that there's something to them, you know? Sure. I, absolutely. I mean, 100%. Um, so, so, dude, I'm dying to know what, what did she tell him she could do? Pachita, like, holy shit. Pachita was a surgeon. She's like a, a surgeon like too? A, yeah, yeah. A shaman surgeon. Her, a sh shaman surgeon, yeah. Okay. She just used like this busted up knife and... To be honest with you, I'm going to tell you this, and you're not going to believe it. I don't believe it either, but this is what Jacobo says he saw in his book. Uh, he wrote a whole book about it. He says that she made transplants of the most outrageous organs that still to this day can't be replicated by modern medicine. Uh, she, he, saw, he saw her do um, lung transplants, uh, vertebrae transplants, uh, he saw her take out uh, brain tumors. It was wild. And she said that <laughs> okay. she was being channeled by the last Aztec emperor, that it wasn't her, really. That the one who you. had the powers was Emperador Cuauhtémoc, who was the last Aztec emperor. Th that's who she's saying was channeling through her? That's who she said was channeling, channeling her, yeah okay um wow okay just to be yeah. transparent to the audience for maybe some people that don't know i do my mom is from mexico city pablo you and i've talked about that you know i've been yes. around mexico a lot my brother's born in guadalajara shit i was almost born there i've lived there i've lived in veracruz I, honestly not that even long ago um so i spent all my summers in mexico 
but I've never heard of this stuff, to be honest with you. Like some of it I have, but you know, I'm trying to jog my memory and think like, what do I know about that? You know what I mean? Like, what have I heard? What have I seen? And, and again, this is fascinating, first of all. So I get why he wants to see this, right? Greenberg says, yeah. you can do this. And he says, I got to see this. Now, yeah. I don't know. Some people listening or watching may know. I have, I don't remember where I've seen it, but I remember seeing videos of, I'm not saying that's what this woman was doing, but I have seen videos of how they fake stuff like that, where they pull kidneys out and they hold it behind their hand and they got blood and it's a towel and they make it yeah. seem like they're cutting in and they, but they don't do anything actually. It's like, yes. Um, so I don't know if that's happening. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but that's the first thing that came to my mind when you said that. Um, but again, I totally get why Greenberg try and take a scientific approach. He hears this. He says, I need to see this, but maybe not see it. He needs to see, see, let's see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, no. So, okay. Yeah. This is fascinating, man. Th this is fascinating. I will say that. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. This is just the beginning, bro. No, you <laughs> can interrupt whenever you want. This it's is a just fucking a, wild you tell story. A good story. Dude. No, dude, you tell a good story, Pavel. I, I gotta, I gotta say. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, I, I do have to uh, preface that when when I saw the documentary and I made these connections, the other experiences I had uh, happened after I, I studied and read some books. Uh, I met psychedelics and initially it was just a party, you know, just as any sure. other 18, 19 year old. Yeah, you know? been there. But then when I when I tried LSD, which was like the one that I that hooked me, I realized the the capacities that it has in people's minds. And then I, I realized the reason in the 60s uh, why it was banned and why the government wanted to use it uh, to weaponize it, essentially, uh, because uh, I view it and uh, all the other psychedelics too, but uh, LSD and mushrooms specifically, yeah. I view them as tools to help us understand reality in a different way. Uh, okay. In a non in a non materialistic way, you know. And I've taken shrooms before too. It's been a long time, but I'll be honest, that was not my experience on them. I hated yeah. it. It's not for everyone. This is not for everyone. It, it it but I will say this it does I totally see what you're talking about though right because I remember sitting in a couch and like melting into it dude and I couldn't get up and I remember like just having this and music it was so interesting and you know what I mean in a different way from like because I had smoked weed at that point for sure and you know it wasn't the same like at yeah. all Th this was definitely a different um experience so and i've heard people mention what you know what you're saying i've never tried lsd though so or acid or anything like that you know it's i was always, yeah. i was scared to try it to be honest Me with too. you you know um because i knew friends that would screw with it and they were kind of kooky and i thought did they were they like that before or did the lsd make them that way you know what i mean i didn't know their origin story so i thought okay not gonna mess with that but all right this is fascinating man okay so you you decide to finally take the leap right yeah and when i did it i i started reading all all the history and documentation on it because i was fascinated by the effects that it had not just in visually but also in the mind uh, the types of, of of thoughts that it made you go through um yeah. It was instantly like a change in my personality. It was instantaneous and it never changed ever since because I was kind of, I was kind of an asshole before I took it and it, it made me a more empathetic person in many sure. ways sure. and a more analytical person yeah. also. And as I went through a decade of industrial quantities of LSD, I shit you not a decade. 
I started noticing some patterns. Uh, I had three or four experiences that were very different. One, the first that I will never forget was in uh, Valentine's Day 2006. It was uh, uh, two friends and me. We just wanted to drop some acid and just trip at my apartment. And that's what we did. And at a certain point in the, uh, the night, uh, we started not speaking, but still hearing our voices. And it freaked us out because it was. So this is voiceless happening. talk. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. eyeless eye, telepathy. voiceless talk. Yeah. Telepathy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Got it. And obviously you're high, you're tripping. You, you're like, uh, the day after you're like that didn't happen it's we were just tripping balls right but yeah many years later i i i asked them again and they were like no it, it did happen i don't know how but it did happen and so y'all had done l you guys had friends had done lsd multiple times and that yeah. that had never happened no and it uh, never happened again after that after it just that. happened that okay. once oh that's interesting yeah that's interesting yeah. Another experience is I essentially controlled the whole evening without opening my mouth, but thinking that I wanted to, I wanted stuff, you know, that I wanted situations to happen and stuff to happen and uh, things to just materialize and appear like food or a cabin with a, with a bathtub where I could bathe and it all fucking happened. And Wait, there was a there hit a bath yeah. a, a cabin with I, a bathtub. I, I was at a rave. Uh, I was at a rave, and I felt really dirty. And I, 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 I was Those already things are dirty. I got it. I was yeah. I was already starting to uh, try to do this because I felt something was weird because I started thinking shit, and sh the shit that I was thinking started happening around me. So I, I was like, what, what's happening? Is this for real? So I started just doing little experiments, you know, and when, when I, uh, when I realized that it was happening, I should, you not, I thought that I wanted some carne asada and it was like early in the morning, like, uh, I love it. and, and I was like, I'm going to think something really, really weird and random that in no way can happen here, you know? And like half an hour later, some dude with a big asador just walked past me and he started putting all together for a carne asada. And I oh my ate God. my fucking carne asada like the happiest man in the world. Man. Yeah. <laughs> of course. And that's when I realized that this, uh, essentially the theory that the doctor talks about, this intergic theory, which he developed over the years and after studying all the shamans and trying to understand the scientific aspect of what they did and the nature of what they did. Essentially what he, the, the synthetic theory is that there's this neuronal field, right? Of okay. reality. And there's this lattice, which is like the grid, uh, which is essentially like the matrix of information. And he says that our minds have the capacity to make those two uh, interact and okay. that is what creates reality that's reality and he says that we already do it on a, on a daily basis we he says that we create through this interaction through this synthetic theory we create everything that is around us and wow. there are un, there are some anomalous shit that are hard to explain such as the ufo phenomenon sure that kind of are not part of that re this reality that we create but they interact with it constantly and and that's when i saw the documentary and the work he did and all that those experiences that i had in the past i realized that there was something to it but i i started becoming obsessed of trying to find out how to make it happen without the psychedelics because psychedelics are i view them as a shortcut to get all this stuff but there are ways natural ways to get this stuff yeah. which is 
uh, what essentially the the yogis and all these old ancient philosophies uh, were about. Do. Yeah. Hey, Pavel, hang on one second, dude. My dog. Yeah. Two seconds. So good. So good. Okay, cool. No, there's a storm. There's a big storm here, dude. Oh. Like a so hail, doing okay? like yeah. It's like we got we got hail coming in, dude. Like size Damn. of baseballs, bro. It's Texas. Uh, no, dude. Every year we deal with this. It's all good. We know what to do. I got a garage, so my car's good. Um. Uh, anyway, so so sorry. Please, it's okay. Um, let me recap real I, quick for people. So yeah, yeah. so we got what what did you call both? We got matrix the new and, the new the neuronal field and the lattice neuronal field. Yeah. What does that and mean? The lattice. Uh, Neuronal. It's, uh, neurons. Neuron, a neuron field. That's, yeah. that's one part of, you know, re let's think of it like a dough. We got flour. That's the neuronal field and the lattice come together yeah. to make this dough, essentially, yeah. right? Water and, yeah. and flour come together to make this dough. And that dough, that's reality. Yeah. Right. And UFOs potentially, where are they coming from then? That's where other uh, other theories come in because uh, he's not the only one. You know, he uh, when I started investigating him, I realized that there were many more PhDs that had their own theories about it. There's Bernardo Castro, who is very active in the UFO community right now. When you There's say their Dr. own theories, do you mean? the neural field and lattice connection reality and then what the ufos are in relation to that or their own theory on just their, just their theory on on what reality is because i got you yes uh, okay be, okay got because uh, at first i didn't know if dr greenberg was into the whole topic of the ufos but then i i showed you two pictures yesterday that confirmed he was uh which we'll yeah. talk about a little later which uh, was a, a massive find for me because I've seen that uh, documentary, which is called the, the Secret of Dr. Greenberg. It's it's not in English. It's in Spanish. I'm sorry. But I know people that are currently trying to work on getting it uh, with subtitles in the States. Uh, Ida Cuellar is one of them, one of them who is the director, but the distributor, the distributor is trying to make it happen. Yeah. Um, and what the uh, the other theories that exist uh, and are for example dr donald hoffman has one called the conscious realism model he talks about like uh like uh essentially like a computer like uh you get the icons and you get the interface and that's what reality is and dr greenberg says that we create the reality with our minds with that uh, interaction between the neuronal field mm -hmm. and the lattice there are others uh such what is as the, the lattice what is he saying the lattice the lattice is, is like is uh, imagine the matrix like the yeah. informational grid but what does that mean like it's it's like mean? fabric a lattice a is fabric? like a fabric of information okay and then and the neuronal then... field is is essentially consciousness uh, the, and they interact and create reality so it's under this theory if humans didn't exist there would be no reality i have no idea do animals I have no idea. do they animals create their own reality under this greenberg greenberg only spoke about the human potential he didn't go into animals yeah and that's and yeah uh, under his theory we create animals too you know which is really weird <laughs> we create the animals like we we imagine Everything. them so they're there yeah essentially um yeah. okay now what about like evolution right that uh our consciousness developed i may well i guess we don't know i mean that's a theory right so like our consciousness developed over time and when did that happen and did we always have it do animals have some sort of consciousness i mean this is fascinating i gotta say personally i, mean, let, I think animals real. do 
I mean, let's be real to this whole conversation. Okay. I know I'm pushing back and I'm saying some things and, you know, go ahead. We're having fun and, and whatever, yeah. but let's be real also. Nowhere does science understand consciousness, right? That yeah, is true. Yeah. That is an open field. Nobody understands. I mean, they don't even know why we dream entirely, right? Or go to sleep even, right? Uh, you know, so we don't know the full breadth of our consciousness consciousness the full power of our consciousness where it even came from where it's even located in our brain if it's a thing if it's a what i mean we just can't figure it out so to be fair to this whole conversation um right it does leave open these possibilities of what you're stating yeah. right so like dude i i mean i don't know anybody else watching or, or listening right but i don't know about you but i've sat in my living room a couple times and been like looking at something like let me move that motherfucker you know let me yeah, let me yeah. just let me just grab it somehow from a distance right i'm 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 connected right between my fingers and that thing is is air molecules and these things maybe i can manipulate you know i don't know but you know we've all had that thought so this is fascinating man so okay please please continue okay um so uh we? bernard there, Castro, there so, his reality yeah the thing is the thing is is that there are so many there are many theories nobody's an expert in it yeah but i mean i yeah I, I do agree with that yeah and all these theories are just theories you know but where sure. greenberg uh sets himself apart from all the rest i think is in an experiment he was doing in 1994. uh the documentary talks about uh how he disappeared in in december of 1994. It will be 30 years uh this year since he since he disappeared and his body has never been found no uh people people uh there are many theories of what happened the most uh where did uh, he disappear exactly do they know that like his last whereabouts yeah. yeah okay so he was going he was doing some uh one of the pictures i sent you is from a, a conference in Costa Rica with many of the most prominent ufologists and consciousness studies uh, scientists. I'm going to put the picture and, up right now. Can we just say who that is? It's yeah, Jack Vallée, yeah. right? That's, that's it's Dr. It is. Jack Vallée. And uh, there's an, uh, I, I gave you there's two, two pictures. two pictures. Yeah, there, there's yeah. two. You're right. Exactly. That's proof. There's of one two. where where Jacobo Greenberg is in the background, just walking away. And yeah. There's Dr. Jack Vallée. And I don't and know. It's obvious. Guy, if you can tell from the pictures. I'm showing them yeah, on screen it's, now. It's, it's Jack Ballet. I agree. It's, it's him. him. In both pictures, he's there. Yeah. Uh, that picture that is like in the on the outside, that is from another conference in Madrid. Got it. There's another person. Do we know what year that, that is? That pictures that that's in the early 90s. I don't know the exact year. Well, he but, disappeared in 94. Yeah, but the other picture, the one where they're sitting at a table, apparently. They're conversing or something. Mm -hmm. There's Dr. Jacques Vallée, and then there's John Keel, who wrote the book, uh, um, the Trojan Horse book about the UFO phenomenon. And okay, uh, so they that's proof that at least the doctor knew or uh, spent some time with Dr. Jacques Vallée at these conferences. And let's be real, they would have talked UFOs and been right. Like, yeah, of course, let's be real. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, they're the two big, the two biggest, uh, like the yeah. dawns of the UFO topic. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. Okay. So we know the one picture where he's outside is early nineties again, and 94 is early nineties. So literally within a few years of his disappearance and yeah. the other picture, do we know what year that is? Yeah, that's exactly in November 1994 at a conference in Costa Rica. That was one month before he disappeared. He disappeared so he in December, December. December 1994. Yeah. And Damn. the documentary so after this conference. Wow. The documentary talks about that in in that Costa Rica conference, the doctor came back to Mexico and he his attitude completely changed. They took him to the doctor because he was in distress, like massive distress. Yeah. And then he disappeared. So whatever happened in that conference, whoever approached him and talked to him, told him something that made him getting deep distress. And then he disappeared in December. Well, why do you think someone told him something distressful at that conference? Here it is. 
he was doing an experiment. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna tell you what it is right now. Okay. There is this phenomenon that uh, Albert Einstein calls it a spooky phenomenon. It's okay. called uh, non-locality or quantum yeah. entanglement. Yeah, I've I don't know if you've this. heard of it. I have. So I mean, not he that wanted, I know anything about it. I'm just saying I've heard yeah. of it. Dr. Greenberg wanted to prove because uh, in 2022 they already gave a Nobel Prize for to three different scientists who proved this was uh, uh, real between particles. Correct. Which essentially the non-locality in quantum entanglement is a particle in a space time in a place in space and time is connected with another particle in another place anywhere in the universe. Right. But they have to interact first. Once they interact, they can be separated. It doesn't matter the distance, and, and they are connected. still connected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Which what, is fascinating. Let's be real, right? Yeah. That's like crazy. So what Grimberg wanted to do, and he called a, a famous doctor uh, called Dr. Amit Goswami from India. I interviewed him on my channel on Psicoactivo. We talked about all of this. Uh, you can go to the channel. And the, the conversation is really interesting. Uh, they did the experiment between human minds. What they did first, they put two people together in a room and they made them interact, laugh at each other, just like create a, like a, uh, it is a, in a sense, uh, flirting and creating a connection is telepathy in a sense, you know, but a lower form of telepathy. So they connected and then they separated them. And they put these little uh, electrical thingies here in the, in the brain, in the head. So they put one of these people in a dark room and the other one, they started doing experiments on them. They started flashing lights on their eyes. And they connected both people. And they saw how, you know, the, the little thingy that just reacts like this, like the earthquake thing, you know, or the... yeah. The lie detector, how it reacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they when they did this, uh, the the light in, in the eyes, it reacted, right? So they did the same with the person that was locked in inside a dark room, and they saw the same reaction at the same time, and slightly uh, smaller reaction, but it was exactly the same. And they proved it out of five times they did it, they proved it three times. So it's a positive percentage of of uh effectiveness if you may if you may that's interesting. where why does where, it work all the time and that that's that i have a theory about that because uh i think that it has a lot to do with belief i mean i've you hear this a lot in this field yeah. um yeah. i still don't know how i how i feel about that but if i'm being honest I can understand that too, to some extent. If I really forest through the trees, I, I could hear and I could understand an argument to that. Um, did, have they? Did they try this experiment other times? This is where it gets scary. Okay. After the Costa Rica conference, Dr. Greenberg was supposed to travel to India with a part of his team, and another part of his team was staying in Mexico City. And uh, there was this satellite uh, technology they had at the time uh, that they were going to use that had only like a millisecond kind of uh, latency. And they were going to try the experiment uh, between two mines in India and Mexico. And when the doctor was about to take a plane to India, that's where he disappeared. He never took the plane. Wow. He uh, didn't get to he didn't get to publish his paper. It is written. I I will send it to you and you can put it in the description so people can read it and see for themselves. Okay, sure. All right. And and I in my opinion, if this paper had been published and peer reviewed, I think that Dr. Goswami and Dr. Greenberg would have won a, a Nobel Prize way before that 2022. 
Well, that's not how they prove to get the Nobel Prize, right? To for yeah, that's no. not how they prove non locality. They didn't they didn't blindfold two people and separate them and flash uh, flashlights in their eyes. I'm pretty sure that's not how that was done. But no, that was that was between particles. Yeah, what, yeah, what, exactly. What, what Grimberg did was far more impossible but, to believe. Well, but can't anybody just do this and prove it right now? What 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 is I get That's the belief true. thing, but if you get two people who believe they can do it, isn't that enough to 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 do it? So th this is one of the reasons I think the doctor never appeared again, because you know you know how these uh, secret programs are like they that's what they're secret that they do all kinds of experiments in secret, but they saw the doctor was doing it very publicly, and he was going to publish the paper. Yeah. So. They wanted to keep doing it. That this is my belief, to be sure, honest. With sure, sure, of course, of course. I there, I have no proof of this, and that's why they uh, essentially took him. And so you think something happened at this conference he went to? They approached him sometime there and said something to him. But but then he he does go back and set up another experiment. He tried to set it up. The the one in but, India. That's he, what I mean. He was if, about, but he but he set it up after the conference, right? That he t potentially had been told something distressful. Uh, what, what they tell you in the documentary is that the the trip to India was already set up, and so he, he had this experiment set. Okay, okay. Yeah, I it was already scheduled. I yeah. got you. I got you. Okay, okay. So he already has this scheduled. He goes to this conference hear something um and then there is a month well i guess we don't know the date in december right no more or not less exactly, okay no. okay gotcha so maybe a week two weeks three weeks somewhere in there he has time back in mexico where he's who knows what either for, or distressed right you said he did go to a doctor is there proof that he went yeah. to his doctor okay yeah. Um, so he goes to his doctor, he's distressed. He's supposed to get on a plane to head to India, right, for this trip, and he never gets on the plane, and that's when they noticed he was missing. It took him it took them three weeks to notice he was missing because he had this uh nag of just disappearing and doing his own thing. Well, that's kind of oh, a red flag there, right? Maybe yeah, but when they realized that he didn't use his credit cards or anything, that's when they made uh the report. And what happened was there's this commander Padilla, Clemente Padilla, who was in charge of the case uh, of the doctor when they 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 made the report that he disappeared. And this commander, uh, he found a lot of inconsistencies. Is this in Mexico in City? Yeah. You know, my uncle was a police officer in Mexico City and during that time, 94. Like, pretty high up, man. Why don't you ask him? I bet he he has heard something. I mean, this is interesting. I got to admit, he's still alive. He actually lives here in DFW now. They moved up to uh, Texas, you know. It's one of the most enigmatic cold cases in Mexico history. And to this day, nobody can tell for certain what happened. The findings that Padilla did uh, uh, had were really interesting because he he found pictures and an account from a person at a, at a at a gas station in boulder colorado that describes the dr greenberg and his wife at the time who uh in the documentary they paint her as a cia operative who wait when was dr. this boulder colorado trip that's when they saw him after he disappeared that they saw Got him it getting out of a plane getting into two white cars with but agents. who saw him uh this this dude from uh from the gas station and he knew he knew the people uh the the, the agents How did he because know who they, it was because he knew the agents that that picked them up at, at the at the airport because there there was some well you know in colorado there there are a lot of uh agencies there like a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies. yeah oh yeah i've been to colorado a lot i've camped out there um yeah and he knew great, great these people. agents he knew he knew one of them he knew them he knew him by name he knew who he was 
because they would come he, by a lot. Yeah. Did this dude and, work at the gas station? Yeah, he worked there. But how did he know who they were transporting? Be, no, because uh, during the investigation afterwards, Clemente Padilla went there uh, because he got, he got a tip and he started. He showed him uh, a picture and said, hey, yeah, was this yeah. the guy that got picked up? He's like, yeah. yep, that was him. That was him. Okay. And he described the wife, too. And he described another blonde woman who was constantly with the wife. Uh, but how did they know to go look and show the pictures at this guest? Okay, so at uh, do you remember Siempre en Domingo? Yeah. Uh, at that show, his daughter, Estusha Greenberg, she's a musician. So when oh, she was shit. doing promotion, yeah. when she was doing promotion for her, her latest album there, she asked permission to make a public announcement about it, her father and showed a picture on national television and that's when the calls started coming in and out of all the calls only one was like kind of credible and Padilla took that call and took the tip and just went to the to boulder and started investigating hmm that's interesting so this gas station guy he just he doesn't know anything about this he just living in this town and working oh i mean that is interesting that he could identify um, him and his wife, he said. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to miss Greenberg, you know, because he sure. had like this really really large black beard. And yeah, it, it was. It was. And they easy say the to... wife maybe was CIA. Yeah, because there was are a American. lot of. Uh, no, she she was Mexican American. She had family. She had family in Rosarito. Uh -huh. and when the, she's like me she's half yeah half. when 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 commander padilla went to his house yeah he, he had like two different homes one where he where he lived with with her and one where he lived alone and his family uh in the documentary talks about uh greenberg saying that he was sick of her that he couldn't stand her anymore that he was afraid of her oh wow so so okay. they they always suspected something was off, you know. And when when How long Clemente were they Padilla, uh, just know? a few years, they met at one of these conferences. Actually, wait, what? Yeah, at one of the she UFO conferences, uh, uh, consciousness or UFOs or something. I don't know what so, it was. Okay, gotcha. But something like that. Wow. Okay. Well, that is interesting. Okay. I'm when not the lie. when the when the running theory of her killing him because that was the main theory they were going with at the time uh when clemente padilla went to the house of greenberg he noticed that all his work was gone all his computers all his memories all his pieces Just, everything yeah everything gone, gone. jesus yeah. okay I so mean, that's, that's where suspicious it, yeah it is for sure um Okay. Wow. So, okay. So just to recap here, you know, this theory, he, he hears something at this conference from, I guess, potentially, you know, the CIA, maybe, I mean, yeah. were they, so you think they were trying to get him to stop doing stuff like stop in experimenting in public, but maybe come work for us potentially yeah, because Do you think they tried to recruit him. There are uh, okay, so there's there's this book called uh, from Daniel Golden called Spy Schools: How the CIA, FBI, and Foreign Intelligence Secretly Exploit Americans' Universities. And Padilla yeah. found pictures of Greenberg giving lectures at American schools and many different universities before he but, before he disappeared. Yeah, before he disappeared. Got it, got it. And his family did say that he got constant uh, offers from the American government to work for them. And they said that he rejected these offers. But what Padilla found tells a different story that he did accept or maybe reluctantly. I don't know, you know, but there is proof. There are pictures of him giving lectures at these schools. Do you, do you think he's this guy? Do you think Greenberg's still alive, but just working for the American government secretly? There was a, a later tip that Padilla got in the early 2000s that from a person who worked at a, at a mental hospital who claimed that Greenberg was locked 
in the hospital. And when Padilla went to this hospital, he didn't find anyone, obviously. What? Uh, where's the hospital at? It's in Colorado, too. It was in Colorado, too. Yeah. And so Padilla goes to this mental hospital and he's allowed to see every patient? No, he, he asked about him. And wow, they told him that's that not enough, right? There. Like, yeah. And after he came back, uh, they started pursuing him. Uh, they accused him of, of car theft. They took him off the case and he started Mexico. running. And, yeah. He started running and he started hiding. And who was accusing only two, him, though? Like the police? The government. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the government. Well, like, the police or the government? Like which one? He specifically blames President Cedillo. Really? Yeah. I mean, look, I definitely know there's a lot of effing corruption down there, like for sure. So that would not surprise me, to be honest with you, that, that yeah. he personally would get involved with something. Does it make sense? So like, okay, yeah. And you don't want to mess with those kind of powers, right? Like that's not something you want. So, okay, so this guy's now being, you know, you know, pursued, messed with, threatened, potentially, right? By the uh, okay, so where, what happened? There's now? only there's only two people who have interviewed Padilla. One is a, a documentary filmmaker who interviewed him in the early 2000s, maybe late 2010 or something. And then there's Ida Cuellar, who took years to find him, but with when he finally found him, he told him about this, uh, the CIA connection and. How uh, in 2007, do you remember when they declassified all these documents, millions of pages? Do you remember? I don't know. No. I, you know what? To be fair, many, like during, many during UFO that time, documents. I was, I was experimenting with my own drugs back in those days. So <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I don't remember. So those back then, the uh, days. there were a lot of UFO documents that were declassified back then. But amongst those documents were many uh, written papers in English with Greenberg's name on them that spoke about all of his work, uh, his theory amongst them. Okay. And the experiments you went there, I'll send you the links to everything. They're, they're declassified now. So that's when Padilla realized that Greenberg was connected to the CIA. Uh, in 2007 when these documents get released. Yeah, but but the documents he wrote were from the time he went before he was abducted. The declassification yeah. was in 2007. Okay, I got you. So, yeah. Padilla knows about the CIA connection pretty how, how you know when does he find out about the CIA connection? And when the documents were declassified essentially. So he finds out 2007 sort of disappears from the public eye till this documentary filmmaker approaches him in what what year are we thinking 2018 2020 yeah something like that before there. the pandemic i think yeah, yeah somewhere in there because then the documentary comes out 2021 right um you need time for editing you know whatever um okay so all right so what does he say what does he what's his theory like he 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 believes that he was abducted and that he was cooperating in one of these programs that you know it was coincidentally but, when, but alive still uh not right now i don't think because that's when i started digging myself because that the documentary is inconclusive to what happened to the doctor they sure. do make the connection to the cia and the possibility that he was abducted by them to make them make him work for them in these projects but they don't go further than that. And that's when the bug got to me and I, I had to investigate. So I, that's where my part of the, the story comes in because I started talking to a lot of people who uh, some of them visited, uh, some of them interacted with Greenberg in these conferences. I did tell you a little bit about uh, Dr. Jack Sarfati, who, uh, I did speak to him about this and he told me he met him and he, he said, said he met Greenberg. Yeah. He said they killed him flat out. He just told me he was like, yeah. They when did him. Jack Sarfati meet Greenberg? 
in one of these conferences in the late 80s, early 90s? Late 80s. And he only met him one time? I didn't ask him how many times. He just told me, yeah, I, I met him. I I came across him in these conferences. Yeah, that's what I would ask Jeff, Jack Starfire. Okay, when did you meet him exactly? How many times did you meet him? Did you actually converse with him? Did you just see him from afar? Did you hear about him before you met him? You know, that sort of, that's interesting. All right. So, so what makes Jack Sarfati think they quote unquote, I asked him and he, he, him. Did, he didn't respond. He didn't I respond him, to, he didn't respond. Yeah. That's and, quite a claim uh, he, to make without yeah. giving some explanation to that. I know nothing against the good, the good Dr. Sarfati. No, I'm no, just no. saying, um, I wish he would have followed up with you because I uh, just curious, like, why does he think that, um, all right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Please. Okay. So, so when I make the connection of uh, the declassified documents and the Project Stargate, that's what I was going to bring up. Yeah. Of course. I, that that's what I hold my mind because you know the CIA has their own project they're funding for telepathy and all this work from how put off the seventies, right? Uh, Patient Zero. There's a lot there. Um, all, all the things you mentioned at the beginning, right? Pat Price, Joe McConnell. Um, Jack Sarfati, Uri Geller, you know, like you said, how put off. Okay, so they Dr. do that. Dr. Fred, 70s. Alan Wolf, too. Yeah. So Dr. they, Quantum, yeah. he's called. Yeah. So, so that's in the 70s. But actually, I did get find out that we, that Project Stargate was shut down in 95. Did right? you see the connection so, there? Well, yeah. I'm think as I'm saying it now, I'm, um, you know, but they shut. So, oh, okay. So I get what you're getting at. So you're thinking, which is December 94, just basically nine to five, right? So they shut, so they shut it down and potentially start up a new one with Greenberg. That goes way dark, way dark. Do you, do you, do you think there's a name? Do, do you know of any name that could be? No. When I program, asked I mean? about, when I asked about this to the people that are closest to the ones involved, I was told very specifically. Uh, first of all, they, they... I mean, that is weird, dude. Yeah. Not going to lie. First of all, that first of all they, weird. Yeah. First of all, they, they did mention to me that if I approached any of these people with wild claims of conspiracy theories, I would get shut down immediately. And I know I get that, you know. But who uh, people like what? Who are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? I I asked uh, people that are closest to the ones involved, such as Doctor Putoff, and you know, people that Got are it. close to them. They said, I, "Hey, if you go to yeah. them with this, they're going to shut you down." Yeah. About Greenberg. And yeah, and I am I am a journalist, so that is I interesting. Like, I like to protect my sources, you know. Sure. Contrary to uh, your philosophy, which I respect a lot. Sure. Well, I because think, I'm not I a think... journalist. No. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber. That's how, yeah, I'm just an average Joe YouTuber here. You know, I'm not a journalist. So I understand journalists have to have uh, their sources. Like a chef has his sources, right? To get yeah. food. Like I get it completely. And I also, I also don't want, because I, I understood from the beginning that this was a touchy probably dangerous subject to uh jump on so i understood from the beginning that if i wanted to talk about this talk about what happened to the doctor i would probably eventually meet a dead end because if this happened as i imagine it happened i'm not saying it did sure uh the ones involved likely signed a lot of ndas so Anything that you ask them about this, about what happened to the doctor, they just deny it. And they just say, no, I, I never met him. So case closed, you know? Except Sarfati, who, who's like, they killed him. Probably he <laughs> didn't sign anything, you know? And I yeah. already spoke, uh, because I, I spoke to another scientist, uh, Dr. Alan Wolf. And he he actually told me like a really nice story about, about the doctor. Uh that describes his like amicable amicable personality and yeah. how he was always like really approachable to people very nice and That's very cool yeah and and so there is a trace that talks 
What happened to his wife? Interactions. What happened to Greenberg's wife after he disappears? She erased out of the map. Nobody knew about her ever since like, that happened. Was there a funeral? She was. She did, was did he, after. Greenberg had other family. No. La ma, ¿Dónde está la madre? La padre. Lo primo. La prima. Las tías. You know what I'm saying? Greenberg. Like, you mean yeah. you mean Greenberg's family? Yeah, dude. Their family. Know, we're Mexican dog. We got family everywhere. I'll spread yeah. out. I'll, you know. Actually, uh, many people from his family do manage the Jacobo Greenberg Academy. They continue his work uh, on you know meditation and all this stuff, and it is uh, going places. But I don't think it's as as big as it should be, because uh, to be honest with you. Dr. Greenberg took the scientific approach and he wanted to do the experiments and he did many of the experiments. But this other approach that the uh, they're taking is more holistic, you know, as in, you. you know, as in yeah. like... Uh, what he was studying from the dark side of the other guy, right? What you were yeah. saying, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, so the family after he goes missing, the family doesn't do anything. Like, no, of course, of course they, they do. When they, when they when they put out their report, they assign Padilla directly from the from the state. Where's defense. Where's Greenberg from? Because that's an that's an interesting Mexican last yeah. name. Let's be real. Yeah, he's he's Jewish. Uh, he he has Jewish family. He actually visited Israel when he was younger. Yeah, you said that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. You said that. Okay, so is he like? you know first generation mexican i think uh, yeah first generation mexican i think i so his, think so i'm not sure yeah. i'm not sure to be honest with you. got it but they're jewish all, all of his family they're jewish yeah and he has he has a brother who's like a really famous mexican actor soap opera his name okay. is ari telch ari telch i think his name is okay interesting oh my mom probably knows him for sure yeah <laughs> and and the family still wants to know what happened you know they uh recently uh, one of his brothers in the documentary said that he had all this data on on the case and it, they were sitting on it when until a new administration came and when they approached the the investigators they were like let's reopen this because we want to know what happened and in the documentary his brother says that they took the data and just like weeks later they told him that they lost it which is fucking weird dude what you know, it's this is so interesting shady. because, dude, I know a lot of shady shit happens in Mexico and Mexico City, especially. And, uh, you know, and I can see a lot of this stuff happening right to somebody like I'm not saying that Dr. Greenberg was on this crazy thing, but dude, things happen down there for sure. So that is uh, it's very interesting. Um is it possible i'm just saying right is yeah. it possible that he thought you know what this experiment to india isn't going to work and i'm going to look like a fool and in you know and so i'm just going to disappear and and move you know, on you know go down to results. honduras or you know what i'm saying guatemala just like disappear bro i don't know i'm just saying i don't know it could be possible i'm not saying it, it it couldn't be but i mean i guess I, I guess not possible because anything's possible but like pro is there any probability to him just disappearing on his own accord not not because he's scared not maybe just you know what i mean he's just fearful that he thought this isn't my my experiment isn't going to work and i'm gonna you know i don't want to embarrass myself or my family or something i don't know oh uh, well there's a lot of people involved in this and they they don't see it you know nobody because the people that know him because, and everything yeah, yeah and and all the scientists that were around him there that everybody has a lot of respect for everything he did and sure all and of he the had a lot that, of stuff going on right like his trajectory was he was, was one of up. the most prominent at the time and yeah he he, he was friends with uh politicians and why does nobody talk scientists. about him i mean you know i never heard of him so you in mexico him to me. Th this is this is the main problem why I'm so frustrated and why I I am so grateful that you agreed to give me this space to talk about it because oh, dude, of course there's this fucking uh cognitive dissonance in the English speaking community about his case 
in Latin America and in Spain, everybody knows him. Everybody knows him, especially after the documentary. You ask about the doctor and, and people are bewildered by the case and they also want to know what happened. But nobody in the English speaking community even knows his name. Dude. I've spoken I to. I never heard of him. I've spoken to Nick Cook. I've spoken to Dr. Masters, Mike Masters. Nobody ever heard of his name. And when I saw those pictures last night, man, that was confirmation that at least the, the most prominent people in the UFO community knew him. Were there, and, were with them. Yeah. And if if anybody, because I, I if I ever get a chance to speak to Dr. Jack Bale, he already knows that I I had these pictures, you know, and he won't be able to tell me, no, I don't know. He, if he, if he signed well, NDAs too. Well, hang you know? on. Let, let's be fair. I did see the pictures briefly, even though I was telling you, don't show them to me yet. I, I want to see them later. Um, cause y'all for y'all listening and watching Pavel is full of passion. Y'all, as y'all can tell in this fascinating story, he's telling y'all, this is like better than a movie. Um, you could, I'm just saying there could be an argument made that like Jack Valet is just like standing next to him or sitting next, doesn't know, right? You're at a conference. You're just with people. I don't know this guy. Somebody just took a picture next to me. Yeah. That's right? entirely that happens all possible. the time. You're next to people. They take pictures. You don't, you don't know who from who, you know, and the no, one so, he's walking outside, you could just be walking yeah. with people. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not saying that's the case, but it's possible. It's possible. You know? Yeah. So. But look, what did Jack Sarfati say? They killed him. So clearly people know about him. Let's be real. Yeah. So, you know, to be fair to your story and everything, I bet Jack Valet does know who he is, right? I'm not going to lie that this 94, 95 connection of Project Stargate getting, you know, losing their funding, he disappears. It's, you know, CIA wife meets his wife at a convention. Just so happens identified by this dude at a gas station right after his disappearance by known agents right from this gas station attendant right um and identifies the wife as well there with him um right he goes to this conference he comes back he's under distress goes to his doctor all of his files go missing data missing the people looking into him are getting pressured and threatened and right um I mean, there's definitely a lot of coincidences, right? And that experiment is very important, I think, because you, you, uh, what I realized, too, is that what he was essentially trying to prove were the first steps towards making telepathy mainstream, that proving that it's real. And I don't know if you know Dr. Jeffrey Mishlove, yeah, I mean, I don't know him, but yeah, I've heard of him for sure. So he he, he talks a lot of, uh, he's the only American scientist to his credit who knows Greenberg's work and talks about him a lot. And I don't know, man, if if I hadn't had that experience with with substances, I wouldn't be convinced that this shit has something to it, you know? But let's, you know, I'm just... You know, devil's advocate here, right? Yeah, Do you yeah. think it's possible that because you were on these substances, what you experienced, I get that your friends said it as well. But I've taken substances myself and I've had shared experience with friends. You can kind of influence each other by what you're saying. Dude, dude, I can read your mind and then you stop talking. You don't know if you talk. You don't know if you this. Was I talking the whole time, man? You know, I don't even know, you know, and everyone's playing off each other. I don't know. Do you think it's possible that it didn't actually happen? But I guess you're going to say, yes, of course, it's possible. That's not what I mean. You know, clearly you don't think that's probable. Um, it didn't happen before or after you took, right? You're saying, right? You know what I mean? It's not like it happened all the time that you took it. Um, all right. Yeah, I, I got nothing for that. I, you're right. I, I I mean, this is fascinating, man. You know, what do you what do you want me to say? Like that, this is uh, fascinating. Telepathy is hard to wrap my brain around, but it's not that far out there a concept to be accepted. If that makes sense, like it it involves our mind, 
which we all have, it involves some part of our mind that we don't fully understand, right? Um, it's not that far fetched of an idea, right? Um, and yeah. governments have, have spent billions investigating this. Sure. You need to understand that too, because if it wasn't real, it's the same with the UFO phenomenon. If it wasn't real, why would they spend so much money investigating something that doesn't exist? Wait, are you saying uh, the American government has spent billions or yeah. all governments combined in the world? I'm saying all governments combined in the world. I got to be, you. To, okay. be, to be honest with you, because I know I know the Brits have done this too. They have Because America has it. Well, I mean, it, what's well, public knowledge, America has not spent that much money on this kind of research. Uh, yeah, about 20 million or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So billions is like, well, who's spending that other 975 million? I mean, Mexico did open here. Yeah, Jacobo Greenberg is the founder of the Mexican Institute of Consciousness Studies. And they did specifically have a, a, a part of telepathy studies. For for him, yeah. When he disappeared, uh, the money they spent there, that was a lot of money. I don't know how much exactly, but there was a whole building dedicated to it. Yeah. And when he disappeared, the whole institute dissolved completely. They didn't continue. Isn't that strange? Yeah. I mean, look, again, there's a lot of coincidences just based off what you're telling me, right? The facts you're giving me, I there are a lot of coincidences for sure. There's a lot of... I mean, what do you want me I'll to say? You yeah, all there is. That definitely I'll is. send you all the documentation. I'll send you all the proof so you can put it in the in the description. There's some stuff that is in Spanish. I'm sorry for that. Don't worry about we're, it. Look, there's there's we got it. people from Spain that watch vetted. We got uh, people in Mexico watching vetted. Um, I don't know if it's a lot, but let's grow it, right? I don't mind. Yeah. Absolutely, let's get that out there. Um, look, people can translate. They got all that stuff online. Let's let maybe one of the vetters will jump on it and and handle that and then throw a link back up. I don't know if you're watching and you listen, you want to do that, go for it. That would be awesome. That would help out because Tito Patrick's got you know a lot on his plate. That would be a lot to handle. Um, this just is a fascinating story, dude. Okay, it is, which is why I remember when you first initially kind of told it to me, and I was kind of like hearing it but not hearing it because to be honest again this sort of basically happened under my nose uh all the time i was in mexico i remember i know exactly i was about 14 15 16 right summer um i was probably in mexico city in december of 94 for the holidays to be honest with you i i guarantee you i probably was um and that's interesting to me. But I just wasn't into this stuff. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. You know, I just hung out with my cousins. Oh, you were a kid. But yeah, were a kid. whatever they did, that's what I did. And all my cousins were older in Mexico. So 10 years older than me. So they all would go out and do stuff. Y el bebe. I got stuck, well, stuck with my with my tias, mi abuelita. You know what I mean? I'd be stuck, you know, making tortillas. And ha honestly, having a good time, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah, but, being but a kid. It, yeah, but didn't really get to go out with my cousins too much. So they're out partying, having a good time. Um, and I just a lot of my cousins weren't really into this stuff to talk about it to me, if that makes sense. So I, I feel so weird, like not knowing about this guy yeah. um, and, and his story, you know, to be honest yeah. with you. So I'm glad you're telling it. Yeah. And here's where I, uh, because we already know the story, uh, I hope people can uh, appreciate how interesting it is and how I think he deserves to be named alongside other uh, proponents of uh, theories of reality and theories of everything because his theory is fascinating to me and his whole life's work because everything he did with the shamans is amazing. It's uh, definitely important. i would love to get people's in the community their reactions to this guy and the story you're telling right the even more from jack sarfati i hope he watches this and comments down below jack i know i know you watch some of this because i've seen you send an email with my video in it so 
please, if you can comment, give us some more information on this guy, like some more explanation of what you think happened. Uh, that would be fat. Honestly, that would help out a lot. Jack, if you do that, I'll pin the comment to the top of this video. Okay. Um, and anyone else that want like, right. Wouldn't it be cool to try to get some more feedback from some of these guys who are around during that time and could maybe provide some more context about him. Right. And in the American connection, um, Oh, that, yeah. Okay, sorry, go ahead. And where, where I, well, I think Dr. Jacques Vallée, have you heard of this concept of the, of the invisible college from oh, yeah. Dr. Posolka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that um, Dr. Jacques Vallée and those conferences were people from that college because they did it all. The internet didn't exist back then. At least not the the mainstream version of it, sure. and we know that, that this Jack concept of, was was yeah. uh, helped start. Yeah, he was he, he created a, a version of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I think that uh, I don't know. Perhaps Doctor Greenberg was kind of part of that group at a certain point. Of the Invisible College, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, because because he was part of those conferences and and. Even if they didn't didn't really, because because I as you said very well, it's possible that they didn't really interact that much. Those conferences were uh, I do I do have confirmation that one of them was about consciousness, and the other one uh, I I'm still waiting for confirmation that it was about UFOs, and he was in at both of them, the one in Madrid and the one in Costa Rica. And I mean Jack Ballet is there. Yeah, in today's um, climate, uh, what I think is that uh, his studies tie into uh, many of the traditions that Dr. Diana Pasolka talks about that these scientists have, you know, the traditions of, uh, you know, uh, doing these rituals, uh, staying in shape. Uh, reading a lot, uh, being empathetic, uh, being a good person. Uh, and one person that really calls my attention on this because he he's an elusive character in all of this story. And you're, you're going to do a video on him soon is Dr. Tim Taylor. And I wonder if... Uh, He's one of those byproducts of this whole tradition that's been passed through generations. And, and I think that uh, Greenberg was starting to get involved in all of this. Yeah. And something happened oh my there. God, that, dude. What if Greenberg you know? is connected to Tim Taylor? Dude, don't tell me that. Oh, my God. That would be crazy. This is just conjecture. I'm yeah, not. I, yeah, of course. We're just talking here. We're just talking here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but man, it's like every corner I turn, Tim Taylor's there somehow, which is interesting in this community. Um, I mean, look, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the last Tim connection. Taylor's into some of that stuff. So, yeah, you know, from what from what I gather, from what's been told about him, not from his mouth directly. To yeah. be fair to him. I'm going to tell you the last connection I made before we. Uh, maybe talk about something else or leave. I don't know. Uh, depending on the time or leave. How about I'm out? I got a cult to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Dr. Gary Nolan and all his studies on the brain that he's been doing. <laughs> yeah, Gary Nolan. I got an interview coming out with Gary Nolan soon. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so, his his uh discoveries on the caudate putamen and the basal ganglia yeah uh, he talks about this uh the habana syndrome where the cia approached him, approached him with some cases of people yeah. who Study interacted him. with uh with uap right yeah so he talks about some of these people who developed sort of powers healing powers and other phenomena and then there's also chris bledsoe who also talks about having some kind of healing power too and oh, yeah. 
I bet you that they did studies on his brain already and they found this anomaly in the cotted putamen too. What I think of Chris is Bledsoe, that, you're saying. Yeah. Interesting. What I think is that Dr. Greenberg's studies on the shamans, uh, because I, I, I did speak to one of these scientists that I, I, I can't mention his name. And he told me that it would be very interesting to do some uh, brain scans on Mexican shamans or or any other shamans from any country and see if their cotic putamen is also uh, that developed. I thought you were getting ready to yeah. say they had done that and they had shown that. That's what I thought you were getting ready to say, but that's no, they, they have I agree. I agree. That would be worth looking into. Um, that's So these guys are experiencers by accident because they... they interacted with the phenomenon but shamans are not they're experiencers on purpose and they have uh, throughout history they've displayed different kinds of abilities or you know of everything they do i wonder what the problem is these in abilities can't be shown like you know in a like they can never be shown like it's always behind some closed door of a story of a story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you never see yeah. this cancer actually get healed. Like, you know what I mean? It's always like yeah. a story. And I personally, you know, I grew up with my father having cancer. You know, when I was born, my dad had tongue cancer and he lost half his tongue, you know? So he's got bandages in his mouth holding me as a newborn. And then when I got older, he got a brain tumor, right? And then he got a bunch of other tumors. I mean, my dad was just like a walking, you know, he just had the worst luck in the world. And he ended up dying from this brain tumor. Um, and he had several cancers. And I worry about, I just worry about people saying stuff that they can cure cancer like that. It's like yeah, if my course. dad had believed something like that, and then not gotten actual help, right? He wouldn't have lived to in his till his late sixties. Yeah. You know, you know, and you I know worry the story about spreading about... that kind of message, man. Yeah, not, I'm, I'm not saying you're spreading that message. I'm no, just no, saying no. people saying I can cure can't like, dude, I mean, I am, I am giving people my, hope like that. Bo both of my parents are doctors, so I know exactly what you're talking about. You know so. what I mean? Exactly. Yo, yeah. dude, your parents yeah. would be like, yo, yo, no, you, you got to go see a doctor. That's why. Otherwise, that's why, that's would why they, I'm know? saying I, I don't believe uh, until I see, man, because yeah, the, Dr. Greenberg can. He wrote about it and he says he believed it. And I'll I'll show you he some. He says he believed he the healing stuff too. Yeah. He 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 talks about Pachita. Because of like, Pachita. I was just gonna say Pachita. Yeah. yeah. He, he was like, I'm a scientist. I only believe in the scientific method. And what I saw Pachita do, I still can't explain. Were there how, any other scientists that saw Pachita do it and believed her? Not scientists, parapsychologists who are not credible, to be honest with you. The so only no, scientist who did this was him. That's what I mean. So there was no other reputable no. doctor. And they're very famous too. The it. you know uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Mm -mm, I don't know. I he's don't a he's a something. Chilean very famous uh, writer, and also another from Spain. He was a Jesuit priest, and then he became a parapsychologist. His name is Salvador Freixedo. Okay. And they both visited Pachita too, and they saw the same thing. And Greenberg, to his credit, yeah. he he talks about the same things. And when he first arrived with Pachita, he was only well, supposed to be there for Greenberg two weeks. Greenberg also claims to read without seeing, right? So. Yeah, uh, the people in the documentary they say they saw him do that. But how do you see him do it? Does that make sense? Like, like how do you, like for example, uh, he was one. One journalist, her name is Tere Valle. She was very famous in Mexico. Uh, she said that uh, she she would do these experiments with him. She would just like to catch him in the act, you know. And she would she would just be like a new book. She would just be like, "What's in here?" on on the back. And he was right in front, and he read the whole thing in front of her, right there. I'm not so saying I believe it. So he would close his eyes and could read the book or keep his yeah. eyes open and read through the book. I don't know that. I think it's with the, the eyes closed because uh, the experiments he did with children, they were all um, blindfolded. Blindfolded. Yeah. 
And there's this, uh, in the documentary, there's this account that the children allegedly uh, started seeing entities as they developed this skill of the eyeless sight. And many of them got spooked and they didn't want to do it anymore. I did see one time, again, this was only one video that I saw. Um, I don't remember the channels on YouTube. I'm sure, I hope somebody in the comments can... Uh look for this and find it um it was in in there's these people in india that sort of claim have similar claims okay and they went and were able to sort of bust this guy that was real famous for saying he could do it right and they find they busted him like faking it essentially what he was doing yeah. and he wasn't working alone um but again it's one video I saw. Okay, this is this is to, to be fair to this whole situation, right? Um, but I don't know. I mean, there are still schools. I don't know here. Like these days, there are schools that do it, and they train where? people to do that. There are schools in Spain. There are schools in South America. Yeah, look, I know, man. I it's a very uh, it, that that's the thing that Amer I think a lot of Americans don't understand is that latin cultures are definitely more spiritual right yeah. and more and 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 you know i i kind of like that in a way because that there is this sense about like more than us right um that that air and and i understand that like dude when i lived in spain like reiki was hot man that that was like everything everybody talked about and a lot of other things just living in andalusia like that's that was a lot of the way of life so that's I mean, it's fascinating I need, that's where i need to be uh extra careful because it gets uh into the woo woo part of it very quickly sure. it's a slippery sure. slope i understand yeah. i mean and, look it's all kind of woo woo in my opinion all of it yeah from ufos yeah. to that why is that not woo woo and this is like it's all woo woo to me i'm not into the whole oh we can't talk about that but and i always make that same joke but interdimensional time traveling beings let's talk about that that's okay <laughs> yeah like yeah. come on i think all of it is open to possibility and open to discussion and i think conversations like this are important man and to bring it out and let people come to their own conclusions, do some research like you're, you're offering. And look, you've had an experience that I haven't had. So you're coming at it from a place, like I get it. You know, it's like yeah. you're going to be a little more convinced at this point than, than someone like myself who, who I've never, I've never done anything like that. I've never had any te telepathic experiences or, um, anything I couldn't explain like that, you know, uh, the, the story told about the rock in the mouth. I've never had anything like that, you know, to me. Um, so yeah. Have you ever thought about, you know, trying to recreate this experiment for yourself in current times or re so, retry, you know, I thought some about of this it, or something. I thought about it a lot. And given that I, convince myself that the phenomenon is real i don't know what it is but i know it's real i read a lot of accounts of people that have had these abduction experiences and all this shit i am really scared that if i try any of this i may attract something that i don't want to try so fuck no i don't even want to think about I prefer just studying it as much as I can, interviewing people, which I'm doing about it, try to get to the most objective explanation that I can find. And that's about as far as I can go because I do want to live a life relatively away from whatever this phenomenon is. Because the the negative experiences that I've read about are just as many as the positive ones. And it's like a fucking 50, 50 coin toss. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to risk that. So what would you no. be like, 
you're saying like if you tried to take LSD again or or even without it, like, well, first of all, when you took the LSD with your friends and stuff, were you trying to be telepathic or it just happened? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. So when you took LSD with your friends, right, and you experienced telepathy, did you try to make yourself, you know, telepathic or it just happened and you noticed? It Oh, just, shit. it just, it just happened. So, okay. So you've never attempted to be telepathic out of nowhere. Just like, No, interesting. no. And you're afraid to try that is what you're saying. Yeah, I don't, I don't even want to with, think with about drugs you. or without drugs or whatever controlled environment you know let's say you had a doctor who was like an administer lsd and say okay we're gonna you know you you don't you wouldn't do that yeah i mean i'm with you on the whole ce5 make contact i don't uh for a minute there i was gonna try it and i was like i'm open to it let me give it a go but the more i found out I just thought you know what why would i risk that i don't know even though these people are telling me no they're friendly they're fun how do you know There is, it's impossible for you to know what these beings are, if they are who they say they are, if they're benevolent, right? If they're have my best interest in mind, right? Um, or what? So why risk it, right? With something so unpredictable, right? So I, I get your point for sure. Um, Yeah, I, I totally get why you wouldn't want to uh, have have your friends that um, you experienced it with before. Have they attempted anything since then or done anything? I one of them uh, did like to do. Um, he he calls himself a psychonaut. You know what that is? Uh -uh. People who like to uh, experience uh, being conscious inside dreams. Have you ever heard about this? Like, um, I don't Being know. aware I guess it... that you're dreaming. Yeah, I know. That's that's a regular practice in people. So Oh, people he do was that. very That happens he was yeah to he, me yeah a lot, he was very actually. prone to just like keep practicing that. I don't even need to practice it. Like, I just do it. You know, if that makes Yeah, sense. Like, I, it happens. I'll know I'm It in happens a dream, to me and too. I go, I go, don't wake up, dude. You're having a good time. Or I wake up from something and then I go back to that dream. And I'm like, Yeah. I can get myself, if I don't screw around too much and, and get my mind going, I can get back to the place, kind of like reinsert myself. You know, as I'm saying it, it sounds so matrixy, bro. It's crazy. Oh Yeah. my Mm God. -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So look, Dr. Greenberg, we've got the neural field. Did I say that right? Neuronal. Neuronal field, this lattice, which is some sort of. informational information matrix fabric chain thing yeah and 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 when those come together that's reality but how do they come together what makes them come together our consciousness yeah so it's three things it's a three part yeah right and does our consciousness just automatically do it because when i wake up in the morning i just open my eyes i'm not trying to make anything happen does that make sense So that's interesting. Um, how do multiple people experience the same thing? That's I, Soccer I, game, for instance. You got 100,000 people in the stands. What, like, what's I happening am, there? I am trying to interview people, more people to find out stuff like that, questions like that, that I don't Yeah. know how to explain. Wow. I mean, it is fascinating, dude. Again, we don't know the limits of consciousness. I mean, that's And also, true. I, I am a layman. I mean, I'm not an expert on this. There are Sure, people of who... course. Of know course. a lot more you know Of course, of course, of course. so But yeah look, dude, you I you have studied this. You've told a great story today, man. You really did a great job of helping me understand this whole his whole story. You really did. Like, I get it now. I get what he went through. Um, you know, Dr. Greenberg, right? What he was inspired by, what happened to him, 
potential theories on why he disappeared, how he disappeared, the timelines, what matches up, who he was in connection with, who his experiments could have influenced, who they could have scared, right? The American government. Oh, what's this guy doing? He's out in public doing this stuff. This isn't good. We're trying to keep this a secret. He's going to conferences, potentially mixing with well-known ufologists, right? Well-known leaders in the field who have been known to study these things. You've you've yeah. directly quoted um, Jack Sarfati, who I believe is a theoretical physicist, right? As yeah. far as I'm concerned, I mean, you know, he is that guy is he's a smart guy. I'm sure he'd be like, just knowing his personality, saying something pretty snarky about me right now, which to be fair, I, you know, I get it. I, maybe I deserve it. Um, he's claiming right away they killed him. You know, why does he think that? Is it for the reasons you're stating, your theories? He got too close or they didn't kill him. See, your, your theory is kind of potentially maybe they didn't kill him. They took him to start this other program, right? Yeah. Not that he's dead. Because why would they want to kill him if he's if they think he's onto something and get him to help? Why would they what just kill him? What would be the? They saw he was valuable, him? I think. But I I just keep repeating this is all conjecture. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not making any claims. I mean, Pat Price, you know. Because I know you people know. people are gonna be mad at some of the things that I said. And they're gonna what, just what, try to, what do you what are they gonna be mad at? What what I don't did know, you say whoever, they would be mad at? Uh I don't know if Dr. Jack Sarfati uh Jack Sarfati's credibility is always in question, you know. Uh people there are a lot of people who don't like him. I know, I know for a fact I've heard Dr. Gary Nolan saying he uh like snapping at Adam. Uh there's this divide in the community between you know sure certain people scientists and all you know so mm, uh, yeah, fair enough i just all i want is for his case to be more known and for people to know that his work is important for for humanity and there's a lot that a lot of people will have to catch up on on what he did and there are people currently, a shout out to Dr. Alex Gomez Marin, who is currently the director at the Paris Center in Italy. He's one of the neuroscientists who is continuing Dr. Greenberg's work from a scientific perspective. I was just going to ask that perspective. If, if that's happening. Yeah. I was just going to ask that because, yeah, um, building off of that, right? Um, this almost sounds like a Townsend Brown sort of scenario. Not yeah. exactly, but there's something, you know what I mean? Where like he's doing some research, he's doing some experiments, right? And potentially his stuff is implemented in a way and he's sort of taken out of the equation, right? Um, yeah, that's that's definitely, I mean, what's your gut tell you right now? Do you think he's alive still working or do you think he's just too old like he passed away but working on this in the last decade or something or what do you think or do you think he i think he should be know. 77 now so so that's possible he could still be yeah uh alive it's possible yeah that documentary is uh specific about um some of the people that uh mediums they interview because they do interview some telepaths and mediums and they, they say tried, the same did thing they connect with them in the afterlife they they say the same thing that he's not dead he's not in the afterlife yeah how would they know if someone isn't dead i have no idea does that make sense <laughs> what i'm saying yeah yeah it makes sense because yeah that, that like is a medium is a medium claiming that they can contact anyone that's ever lived in the history of mankind. Does that make sense? I mean, that's yeah, what there, that's what that there would are mean. mediums who claim that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's billions upon billions upon billions of people. 
Yeah. That, I, I mean, that's, that's a little far fetched. And I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff. So for me to say that is interesting. Um, I mean, to me, that mediums and that, that's a whole different field, in my opinion. All right. I don't know. What else? What, what else you got, Pavel? I don't know, man. I think we did a good job wrapping this. Yeah. Uh, I think I think we're good. I live inside my own I'm Edgar Mitchell, uh, Apollo 14 astronaut. I had an experience coming back from the moon that uh, it caused me to start focusing myself on what is the nature of consciousness. I live inside my own world of make-believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross.